Now to potential help for the nation's hospital crisis and the expectations that hospitals coast to coast will soon be overwhelmed the way they are here in New York. Joining us now, Lieutenant General Todd Semonite. He's the commanding general of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. He has been assigned the difficult task of finding hundreds of alternative areas that could be used as sort of pop-up hospitals. Just yesterday, he was in Chicago. He was setting us up a massive site there. General, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hey, Oda, first of all, um, just honored to be on the show and just to want you to know that all the thoughts and prayers from everybody in the Department of Defense to goes out to all of these people who have been affected by this terrible virus. And we're just so honored to be part of this amazing federal team to try to mitigate the shortage. Over. Yeah, well, General, you have a huge task ahead of you. I cannot imagine how many pop-up hospitals people are requesting. Just give me a sense of how long the list is of governors who are saying, hey, help me. And how do you prioritize who gets what? So actually, the list was about 100 last Friday afternoon, and we've seen an exponential increase. Right now, the list is over 750 different requirements we have been given by mayors and governors to come in and assess potential solutions. Don't forget, this is a federal response, but we're in support of the states here, and it is an entire federal team. It's not the Corps of Engineers. It's us, it's HHS, and it's, and it's FEMA. So then we get that list from the local people to say, here might be a potential facility, and then we We've got to go in and try to understand, um, hold up, where's actually that curve? When is going to be the peak requirement mm -hmm. for that local city or that local state? And then we've got to get this, uh, the, these facilities created uh, ahead of the need so we can make sure that we're able to mitigate the shortage. Well, you're playing a little bit of beat the clock. Today happens to be April the 3rd. A lot of these cities are saying, hey, we're going to reach our peak by mid-April. Do you have time in these couple of weeks to set up these makeshift facilities and stadiums? or hotels or dormitories? We actually do. Now, it, this, is a, this is a race, though. Right now, today, uh, my numbers are looking, I think we've got about 9,800 beds that are going in right now. Contractors on the ground putting these in. We're going to have about another uh, thir about 4,800 in the next couple, uh, next couple days to get them going. And then the other thing that's critical, and this is new news that no one has heard, we actually have designed a lot of facilities, about 5,500, but then the states have said, give us that design and then we'll put those in the ground. And so that's the beauty of this concept. It doesn't have to be the Corps of Engineers. We did a standard design sanctioned by the federal government, and then we're able to pass that design. So even a very, very small city that might have a shortage mm -hmm. is able to go into a hotel, a college dormitory, or what we would call a bigger space like a convention center or a field house, and to be able to build out a hospital-like facility to mitigate the shortage. Now, General, you make some COVID hospitals and some non-COVID. I guess they're retrofitted differently if you know that there is a contagious virus. The Jacob Javits Center was designated as a non-COVID facility. And late yesterday, the governor said, with the approval of the president of the United States, that that facility will now be used for COVID patients. Do you think that is safe? Because I'm looking at all these kind of open air spaces. Is that safe for COVID patients? Uh, we do. However, there's probably got to be some modifications made. And I want to be able to reiterate that, again, this plan has to be agile. We knew going in certain states wanted COVID only. Other states wanted non-COVID. So when we initially set it out, the plan from New York was to be able to go non-COVID. But now the fact that this has changed a little bit, I've asked my engineers to go in and we look the pressure settings in the building. Javits is actually sectionable. There's a bunch of great big areas that we can actually change the pressure in some. The other thing is we've got a phenomenal Army hospital on the ground up there. I was up there a couple of days ago. These are very, very intense uh, doctors and surgeons who know what to do. They're bringing in some of their capability, some ICU bed-like capabilities to, to be able to continue to augment. So whatever the requirement is, we have the flexibility through the state, the locals, and DOD to be able to meet that changing demand. I don't see a safety problem right now in Javits. All right. Well, Lieutenant General Todd Semini, thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you're doing, for working around the clock, for everyone out here. We really appreciate you. Oh, and I need to stress, we don't have all the time in the world. So this is where you can't do the perfect solution. I love all the doctors. They might say that it should be all these different things. We've got to be able to set the date and be exceptionally aggressive and to be able to get the mission essential in. That's the most important thing is get it done on time. We hear you. We hear you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being with us.